Thank you, Congressman that. Gohmert and uh, the other members present for taking the initiative on this topic. Uh, it's clear, uh, unfortunately, the leadership of both uh, parties isn't terribly interested in highlighting and exposing uh, the soft underbelly of uh, the maladministration of House resources uh, that has been exposed by the Alwyn Brothers scandal. And I'd like just to highlight some of the issues I think that we ought to be thinking about and talking about and questions we need to be asking. And the answers may not be what, I su uh, what, what people suspect they might be, uh, but there's no harm in asking the questions. And you're not being diligent if you don't answer the rather obvious questions as we proceed with this investigation. Now, for those of you who don't know, Judicial Watch is a nonprofit educational foundation that uses uh, the tools available to us under law to find out what the government's up to. And one of the challenges we have initially with the Alwyn Brothers scandal, um, in which there's a significant public interest, is that the Freedom of Information Act doesn't apply to Congress. And I understand there are constitutional concerns about making it apply broadly to Congress, but one of the issues here is about the administration of the House and how employees are handled, how equipment's handled, and uh, the basic uh, running of the operations of the House of Representatives. And I think that's the, top, that's the sort of area that at least can be covered under a Freedom of Information Act type law uh, that would protect the uh, prerogatives of Congress constitutionally in terms of the speech and debate clause and obviously the First Amendment rights of Americans to petition their members without fear of having their names being brought up all over the media. Uh, so I, I think that's something that's got to be front and center, the lack of transparency uh, available under law to American citizens about what the people's house is up to. But given the state of the law, it seems incumbent upon the leadership of the house to make sure that the organs of the house that are charged with policing the administration of the house are doing the work necessary to reassure the American people that the members are stewards are proper stewards of taxpayer resources. And I don't think that's been done in this case. I'm not aware of any official hearing by the House into this burgeoning scandal uh, that has implicated dozens of members, or either innocently or maybe not so innocently, and has led to criminal charges. And uh, there's strong evidence, as Luke has reported on, that about mal malappropriation of government resources, taxpayer resources. And uh, this needs to be front and center, it seems to me, for the House. You know, I recall, I've been around Washington, I, I don't want to admit to this, long enough to remember the last time the rules of the House were brazenly violated uh, by a party. And that was during the check hiding scandal back in 1994. And those where the rules were violated, you know, there was no policing, and it led to the Democrats losing control of the House. And in this case, ironically, the Democrats are most directly affected, uh, but it's the Republican majority that is charged with making sure the rules are being followed. And it, does, it doesn't seem to me like they're doing the work necessary to reassure the American people that they take a crimin uh, potential criminal activity by staff members of the House and potential hiding of that criminal activity by members seriously. Uh, the, uh, the national security issue is something that is obvious front and center here. Uh, there's enough evidence to ask questions about it. And my concern is that the Justice Department is afraid to raise the issue uh, initially because this is what essentially what happened. I don't know if we've had a summary of the scandal. But a family of uh, uh, individuals, Pakistani in origin, who are naturalized American citizens, I think all of them, uh, have been working in the House for a large number of Democrats in violation, seemingly, of rules about how employees are managed by offices. Essentially, you had four or five people working for 40 House offices. That's not the way it's supposed to work. You can't check to see what the individuals are doing work-wise. And, as a, and it led to uh, breaches of secure information, evidently, all over the place, at least on the House Democratic side. And so uh, since then, we've had evidence that they were in contact with some Pakistani officials, and um, there were aliases used, all sorts of red, uh, 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 red alerts in terms of a national security impact. And of course, the data being moved in large quantities also suggest something wrong. And evidently, to even raise that question is something that's controversial. And it seems to me that ought to be a basic question. It could be something as simple as 
a Pakistani family, of an uh, pa- uh, American family of Pakistani origin, took advantage of lax oversight by House administrators t- to, steal, to steal money, to steal equipment, or to use it as a place or a vehicle for which to uh, uh, defraud banks. It could be as simple as that. But frankly, when it comes to political uh, crimes with a political component, I fear the Justice Department is going to fear to tread. And it may not, uh, because of the political nature of what went on, they're not going to push the House. We've already seen pushback from Debbie Wasserman Schultz against law enforcement over her prerogatives, her office's prerogatives here. And I fear the Justice Department is going to be fearful of raising these issues with the House for fear of embarrassing the leadership of both parties. And that's something uh, we need to kind of push the Justice Department on that they don't undercharge or underinvestigate this for fear of the consequences that will happen if they push further and find something that no one wants to find, which is a national security threat at our breasts here in the House. And, uh, and of course, there's this basic issue of who's watching the store? Hundreds of thousands of taxpayer dollars have gone missing through equipment. People, when they communicate with their House members, often communicate the most private information, as sensitive as anything the IRS has or anything that your health doctor, ha- your, your health care provider has. If you've got a problem with your Social Security or your VA benefits, you provide your Social Security information, you provide other sensitive, situ- other sensitive personal data and confidential health data and, situ- and, and uh, data about your situation, and that material could be on your members' servers. All that could have been breached here. So not only is the confidentiality of the House proceedings at issue here, but the privacy interest of who knows how many Americans have been breached as a result of this lackadaisical attitude. And secondly, um, uh, we've got the issue of whether or not the process for accountability here is working. Uh, And and I I shouldn't say secondly, and maybe seventhly. where, where, where are the committees? Where's the House Administration Committee? I'm pleased that the leadership of both parties, when they were briefed by the House Office of Inspector General, said we got to bring the FBI in. But does that mean you shut down your investigation? You don't hold members to account who, when warned about potential criminal activity, continue to place these staffers, or at least one staffer in the case of Debbie Wasserman Schultz, in a position where they might be able to continue criminal activity and still be able to harm the taxpayer and other House members and House staffers. Uh, This is a a mighty serious issue. And I tell you, I don't know whether the alleged DNC hacks and some of the hacks we've seen recently are tied to the Pakistani uh, family crime ring that we have found here in the House. But to the extent Mr. Mueller is doing a competent job, it seems to me he'll want to at least ask some questions to see if there's an intersection between the hacks of Democratic uh, officials, including Debbie Wasserman Schultz, and, this, uh, and the Awan family uh, crime ring. And uh, again, I don't know. It could be all very easy answers to the questions I'm raising, but I don't think there's an easy answer to the fact that uh, this House has failed the police itself and it's left itself susceptible uh, to being um, uh, defrauded uh, by crooks. And you've got to wonder, is this just the tip of the iceberg? I know Republicans have made much of the fact that this is a Democratic issue. Given the way the rules are, who knows? Are there similar situations in the House staffing? I don't know. On the Republican side, I don't know. And this is why it's important that you all push this.